finish up this assembly, we want to add these back tubes. I went ahead and put the one in on this side. Let's do the same thing on the right hand side. So first I will insert that part 215. Let's see, I gotta Almost there. There we go. Okay, so that's pretty good orientation. A couple things we can do here. We know we can constrain this surface here. Make sure you're clicking on that surface. And as well as the surface of that tube. So it's attached along that line. Now one thing I was trying to do was make these bars be vertical just so everything lines up. It's not 100% critical, but if I do that, it'll that's a good constraint because I can constrain this plane. So that's the plane that goes through there as well as that plane right there, which is a vertical plane. So if I constrain those two planes, now I know that bar's vertical. So the only thing I have left to do is constrain it. And I can constrain those in endpoints of the tube there. Those faces, and let's see what we've got. Let's turn off some of these planes so you can see what's happening here. What you're going to see is that that doesn't line up. With that being vertical, that doesn't line up. So what that tells me is this angle isn't quite right. If I rotate this bar over a little bit to help it line up. So what that means is I'll have to go in. Remember this 20 degree angle that I put on here. I need to make that angle different and that was because of that work plane that I put on that bar right there which is that's 212 so let's open up 212 let's find that it's that plane right there oops it's not what I wanted to do so if you right click edit dimension remember that minus 20 what I did was I played around with a couple of different just kind of trying to sneak up on it and what I found, it's a weird, oh shoot, it's a weird number. Anyway, it's kind of a weird number, but just, again, I'm designing this as I go to some extent. So with that angle change, what will happen is that bar that I constrained to that angle, it will, it will move with it. So it should rotate. Now let's look and see. You can see it still doesn't line up because it needs to update. If it doesn't automatically update, go up to Manage and click on rebuild all you see that that bar moved and that looks really close I, I could keep fiddling with it but there's not a whole lot of point in doing that when I go to build this thing the thing I want to make sure is that the parts all fit together so that looks pretty good at that point uh, I do need to add this steering neck onto here before I do that. Let me just turn off all these work planes. Get a clean slate. Now the plane I am going to need is this, remember this mid plane here? Don't want to edit it, I just want to turn it on. Remember that plane? So 
So if you look at this piece here, and this 210 is the that's that left side backbone bar. I turned on that vertical mid plane. Remember that mid plane for the pair of tubes? So that's an offset of a half of an inch over from here. And then also that angled plane. And that's the angle that I used to generate that cutout. So I basically just came in and turned those planes back on. I didn't create anything new. So I'm going to go to my assembly, and I know there's a lot, kind of a lot happening here. But I'm trying to get enough stuff on here that I can add that steering neck. So I think I'm I'm getting close. So let's place the steering neck in here. That looks pretty good. Oh, I am gonna need I'm gonna need those planes as well for the constraints. Oh, I guess I didn't do such a great job of bringing that guy in. Maybe something more like that. All right, so let's start by constraining that to that. That puts it at the angle. Let's use that kind of mid plane of that and then the mid plane of now the plane I'm using here is the mid plane that's the one halfway between these two tubes right because I want that to line up on the center line so let's see what I have at this point so far so good the last piece of the puzzle then is to get it made it into that connection right there and that should be pretty straightforward. I can use that outside surface and then use that surface of the notch. And it's not cooperating. Let, let me try it again. Before I do that, let's. I have so many planes turned on. That's how it goes with tubing. You're just going to have a bunch of planes. Uh, let's see if we can get a better. Hmm. Yeah, OK. Uh, that surface. And that surface there. Okay, so I turned off all those planes. I have nothing interfering. I got a little bit different view here. Let's see if I can get this to constrain to there. Oh, there we go. So I don't know what I was doing wrong. I must have been accidentally clicking on the wrong thing. So there is my sub assembly of my frame. Now, it's a sub-assembly because it's not complete. I still need, like, motor mount brackets, foot pegs, uh, whatever's happening with the rear suspension mounts, uh, shock mounts, all kinds of things. So it's still a sub-assembly, but it, it's a really good starting point for my frame. Uh, one thing we're going to do here pretty soon is take that motor and put the motor and make sure that that all fits and work on our motor mount and those kinds of things. But so right now we're, we're looking pretty good, though, when I... Save this, save it as a new number. Like my subassembly for the backbone was 1001. This is 1002. So I'll save that. It'll update all the dependents. Put that on the drawing sheet. So we'll do a new ANSI drawing. Now, unfortunately, the default here is a D-size sheet. Please do not put your drawings on D-size sheets. If 
you go up here and right click and go edit sheet, you can easily put it on a B-sized piece of paper. So please do that. Um, as far as views, uh, what I really want, let's just kind of look through here and see. Um, ideally what I want for right now is is uh, just like an ISO view. So if you place a view and then you come over here on this cube, if you right click down there, it'll, see cu it'll say custom view orientation. It'll take you back to your model. Now you can turn this and get it exactly the way you want it to look. Click up here on the check mark and that's what it's going to put on the sheet. So that's what we want for now for an assembly. Usually don't do orthographics and the scale. It's got some kind of crazy scale. Let's see how big we can get. Whoa, too big. Uh, let's try. I know that's kind of unorthodox, but that's fine for what we're doing here. Again, you typically aren't going to put dimensions on this, at least not for now. We do want to add balloons in a part lit balloons in the parts list. So to balloon it, just click on each of the features, uh, right click and say continue, click on the feature, pull your balloon out, right click continue, right click continue. Now on the ones that are, that one's bugging me, I accidentally Attach that to something. There we go. Now, if you attach it to the edge, you'll get an arrow. If you attach it to the like inner part, you'll get a little dot on there. It doesn't really matter. Um, try to be kind of consistent with those. Uh, let's see. I need some more balloons. So this guy here. Now on the ones that are repeats. Now, for example, this one is made up of two part number ones. Now, these two are two different parts, so you want a balloon on there, balloon on there, balloon on there. Those two are the same. There's just two of them. Those two are the same. If you need to, you could add balloons to those. Uh, it's a little bit repetitive. It's kind of obvious what's going on once you see that. And then we want to put a parts list on there. Just click on that view, say OK. It'll generate the parts list, and it'll use those balloon numbers. We'll use those balloon numbers. It'll tell you the quantities of those and those are the part numbers. So remember how we saved the files. Those are the numbers that we used to save those drawings. And then you'll have to go in here and type in the description. If you double click in there, that'll show up. Then you can go in and put the, put the names and each part needs to have can't spell. Needs to have a unique name. And just hit enter and it'll take you back. It'll take you to the next line. Uh, Etc. You can do that. So make sure you fill out the title, uh, fill out the parts list. You're going to want to put your name. Just use the text box here put what this is. So it is that tire mini by oops, cap locks. That tire mini bike frame sub assembly and then put your name on it. And now when you save it, whatever you save it as it'll put that drawing number on there. So we'll do a save as just leave that on there and say save it'll put that number on and that's what you want to see where it says drawing number needs a number where it says title needs to have that other information now the other thing you're going to want to do as far as turning in assignments is I want you to export those as PDF and this time what you want to do is put your name in front of that drawing number do not forget forget to put your name in there because everyone's going to turn in this assignment and have the same draw similar drawing numbers. Make sure your name is there on the PDF files. It doesn't have to be on the drawing files. And then save that PDF. And you're gonna remember, you're going to turn the PDFs into me. So there is our sub-assembly of the frame. There is a drawing and that's what I'll have you, one of the things I'll have you turn into me.